Hi, my name is Allison Pryor and I teach acrylic paintings for beginners and all levels. And today I'm going to show you how to put together a beautiful painting and I'm going to show you how to mix your colors and what brushes to use. So let's get started. Okay, let's put a little background on for our giraffes. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of magic mist. I have a link to how, make, how to make your own magic mist. This is the bottle I use, I find great. I'm just going to mist it a little bit with my magic mist. And that way I will get a beautiful transition of colors. I'm, the background for this one, I think I'm just going to use a nice light background, which is probably a bit of red and yellow. This color here. Oops, there you are. Just, isn't that nice? I like that, do you? That's really nice. So I'm going to try that. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Might add a little more red, so it'll be a little more on the red side, just a little bit. We'll experiment with our colors today. All right, so yeah, that's better. That's what I'm looking for. Orangey color. Good. Now, when you're making orange, see if you add too much red, you get, you'll get a, a too, too red up. So usually it's more yellow than red. Okay. So there we go. We're getting it. We're getting it. Takes time sometimes. You might say, well, you know, I say mix your colors yourself, and you might say, well, it's hard. But you just have to keep trying until you get the color you're looking for. Experiment with, uh, if you're trying to get orange, with the different amounts of red to the yellow. But always try to remember that yellow, more yellow than red, you'll get a really nice orange, okay? Too much red, you'll get, oh, I don't know, like too, too on, much on the red side, all right? So this is nice. Yeah, that's nice. And these colors make a really nice um, sunset. All right. So I'm going to keep coming up. And I'm going to get some more of my yellow, my red. So you have to mix, uh, keep mixing. But that's okay. Don't worry if it's not exactly the same. Because if you do, when you blend it together, it'll all be the same anyway. Especially with the magic mist. And magic white is usually good too for blending. So I'm going to continue on up about a little over half ways up with this color. All right. See now, see I got too much red there, but that's okay. Look, just blend it all together and be perfect. <laughs> see, be perfect color. So as we're coming up, we are going to because the like I said, the magic mist. The magic mist will keep your paint wet longer. That way you'll get a chance to blend all this pretty nicely. Because if you, like I said before, if you make a color and it's not exactly the same, see it's different, all you got to do is blend it in with it. Because it's already wet, you're working wet on wet, and it all goes the same color. So you don't have to worry about it uh, not being a match. All right, now I'm going to go into white. White it is. Just white on my dirty brush, and that way I'll pick up still a bit of yellow. But it's going to be more white up here, just so we can get it a bit brighter up here for light. All right, more white. Start at the top and work my way down instead of the other way, because it might get too much orange. All right, so there we go. I'm going to go all the way down. See, because it's still wet. If you don't use the magic mist, you can mist it with some water, but the thing is, it might just make your paint transparent. That's kind of nice. I think I'll leave that. Maybe a little more white at the top. I don't know. I'll try it. Don't hurt to try. It's all right. If you do that, just make sure you blend everything together. Just keep coming down into your paint. Make sure it all blends nicely together, all right? Because you don't want, you know, lines and separations, right? Not in this not in this smooth background that we're looking at, okay? So if you want to make it even more smooth, you can get out a fluffy brush. You get a fluffy brush like this. It's only a makeup brush. You can get that in my Amazon shop or you can buy one at wherever you shop for your makeup brushes. And just go back and forth with this brush and that will make it a beautiful, beautiful, soft blending background. Look at that. That nice. I'm going back and forth, and it's not even destroying the paint. It's not the paint is not, you know, 
getting mixed up too much you get that light color right Isn't that nice now let that background dry and then you can add your dress so we're going to add our pattern to our canvas our paint has to be completely dry okay your background has to be completely dry in order for you to be able to transfer that pattern onto your canvas and or whatever you're using to draw uh, to paint on and I'm using carbon paper and never have any problems with it and so I just transferred the uh, drawing to there and we're ready to paint what I think is I'm going to start with the little patterns that they have on their necks there so I'm going to use a small flat or filbert brush a really small one you can use a small round if you like I'm just going to try this at first okay so I'm going to start with their and they are if they in this painting the patterns are more of an orangey red and burgundy color so you got dark medium and light values so think of three values so we start it doesn't matter you can start anywhere you want uh, with I'm just mixing some of my yellow and red together that I use my background okay and I am going to fill in some of these spots okay so just pick and choose whatever you want to whatever ones you want lighter or darker you know underneath the neck could probably be a bit darker because the light would be shining on top if there's a light and on the back of this neck here so think of the shadows underneath the chin and under the neck that will help you then decide where to put your shadows all right and we will just do that I'll do this one first just pick wherever you are comfortable I'm you know like I'm not gonna worry too much about go outside the lines but if you do you know try to fix it if you can go over those lines that you made you may need a second coat on some of them all right and if you want to you can add a little bit of white to brighten up some areas that you want to brighten up and then you can add some I'll show you now so we'll go with this one here a little bit lighter than that one up there trying to get them so that they're all basically a little bit different from each other you notice the shapes the shapes are triangles and um, rectangles and round and square and so let's see what else we got here some more orange I'm going to add more red this time to this just to uh, so I can get my three values you know and that way it'll look much better I think a flat brush might be better for this because I'm getting can't get around the, the straight edges with this brush so I'm going to change to a flat brush okay so it's good to try different brushes I might even try a, a round brush I'm gonna you know so you know, if I had painted this first and then and then I did the painting after for you guys I would know what brushes to use right away I do know what brushes to use but I, sometimes I have to try different ones just to see what I'm comfortable with so I'm just going to lay on some red and yellow not totally mixed together so I can get a couple of values all in one see that so we'll continue on with mom the mama and maybe I'll go more red this time I'm just picking up color on my brush and uh, I'm not cleaning my brush every time I'm just adding color to it which is good because you get a mixture of different colors and you're using basically the same color anyway red yellow and white all right when we get to the darker ones we can add another color to darken the red so we can get kind of a burgundy color all right or so if let's just continue with the red let's go a little more red so instead of picking up the yellow we'll go red I'm finding the flat brush a bit better it's helping me get those edges better see the filbert is great for round something round right petals on a on say um, 
a flower that has some petals with a round edge or the moon or anything round, an apple. But these have a lot of straight edges, so. Getting a little bit more here. Good. And now we can red and if you want to darken up your red and make a burgundy just add your burnt sienna or burnt umber okay and that'll that'll bring it down to a deep red see that now if you use blue and red it'll give you deep purple so this is giving us a nice deep burgundy color okay I'm just using the corner of my brush at times to get certain areas just going to kind of go around the corner. We'll leave the center for now. Just leave the center and just do the edges and maybe we'll brighten up the center. Let's just try that. Just kind of experimenting with different ways to get those values on there. Corner my brush here like that. And here. Here. I find burnt umber is better for darkening up your reds or any color. It's only brown and black, you don't have burnt umber. Okay, so I'm going to just wipe off my brush a little bit and I'm going to go into just red. I'm going to put that in the center here. Bring that together like that. See, now you got your shadows done. See? want a little more red, go for it. Good. And when we get this done, we let that dry and then we'll do in between whatever color we're going to use for the body, okay? Because their bodies are pretty light compared to their colors there. So now if you also, you can take your red and a little bit of burnt umber on the corner of your brush, all right? See? And then you can put that corner out on the outside so that you get that shadowy color, the, the dark, and then you can still keep the, put red on that again if you run out, but keep that brown on that edge there, and then use that corner of that brush on the edge, all right? And the red in the center. See? And then you get shadow on the outside and your red on the inside. Get some more burnt sienna. And I'm going to right here. See that? Good. I get to keep my center, see? And blend that shadow. It's pretty cool. Can you see that? Oh. You'll see it better if I move this up closer to you. See? It's a shadow. See, far away where it's wet, it's gl glare and you can't see it. You see the glare? So I'll try to, so you can see it better. But when it dries, you'll be able to see it better. And so keep going like that. So um, if your brush is dirty, that's fine. We'll do the under one. So red on one corner of your brush, right? Red on one corner and burnt sienna on the other corner. That way you can get your shadow all in one. Pick a spot. The under the neck, remember we said under the neck should be where the shadows are. And if you if you uh, don't make the shape exactly like you drew it, that's okay. If you made it a bit too big or too crooked or whatever, just that's okay. So you look at the drafts, you know, some of the spots our, uh, our designs are different, all right? So you might need a smaller brush for the smaller ones. All right, so I just put some red on my brush and I'm just going to fill that in there. If I need shadow, I'll put it on after, maybe. Okay. Nice. 
nice so far, isn't it? So let's get a bit of burnt sienna and some red. All right, so that's the shadow and that's the color. And that way you're um, you're able to put two of them on. And now my brush is a bit big for this area. So make sure your brush, if you have to get a smaller one, switch for the smaller. Do the bigger designs with a bigger brush and then switch, all right? Okay, so let's put this one here. There we go. I don't think we're gonna need a second coat because the background is a nice color. It matches it nicely and brings it out more so and uh, it looks opaque. So I got some smaller ones going on there now. So I'm going to switch my brushes to a smaller flat. I like the flat because you can put the color, that's a smaller one, and because you can put the color on each corner, like the heel and toe, I call it, right? So the heel, but you can't do that on round brush and toe, right? So heel and toe, okay? And then you can put the shaded side down so that you can get that shadow color one shadow and then the red so I need some more shadow color all right there we go that's better good I'm just gonna wipe my brush off a little bit because I got too much and I'm gonna add a little bit of red here and then I'm going to put that on there on the top red so shadows on the bottom that looks good. Nice. Now, let's just put some reds on your dirty brush. Get them on there. I'm going to take a small round brush because the rest of them are really tiny. So I'm going to need a really small brush in order to get into those areas. So I just have a small round brush, nice sharp tip on it. That way you'll be able to work with it better. All right, same colors. Some are lighter and some are darker. So you, you get the lighter red ones. You just put that on there like that. You put a couple of those in there. Then you can add a bit of burnt, burnt sienna or burnt umber. Number in the mouth area. Out here. Out here.
and we will add some red to our brush and we will come in here clean that up here I made a mistake that's his eye so we're going to fix that okay that's his eye <laughs> that's her eye I should say that's her eye and we're just going to fill in some colors here some burnt sienna darken it up a bit here if I make a mess outside lines I'll just clean it up with the, the color the background color okay so um, some more red We're just putting color around wherever. So those, those up there, they're black. So you might need to add, so you want to get your paint really dark and you don't want to use black. You just take some of your blue, which is ultramarine blue and brown and make black. All right, and then you can put that up here. Cool. That's nice. I'm gonna take that same color and bring that down around the chin area a little bit, just to kind of a shadowy color down here. That's good. Now, because I messed up his eye or her, I keep saying he. It's a habit. I'm gonna fix the eye. So this is supposed to be black. Right, so just fill that in with black. It comes down around here. So you'll see by your pattern it was supposed to come down here. So make a note of that eye before you start to paint if you haven't already. Um, make a note that that's an eye. Even if you have to write a Y in it or something to show you or to remind you that it's an eye. That's the eye. The eye of the giraffe. Darken this up a little bit here because that's another eye over here, but you can't see it because it's the way he's looking, right? The way she's looking. And good. Uh, we might need some more red and yellow here. So clean your brush, maybe get your flat brush again. All right. And we'll get our flat brush, a small flat brush again. All right. So we will, for this here, we'll add some red. And it's kind of an orangey color here. So I'm gonna add our red and we'll, the paint will still be wet while you're working. So if the paint is still wet, that's a really good thing because now you can add yellow on top of that and spread it out. So on top, spread it out a bit. Now, as you can see, this is not a realistic, this is more of a, a painting. It's not a realistic painting of a giraffe. It's more of an illustration of a giraffe, right? You know what I mean? Like it's a more colorful, more, I'm not sure how to describe it, but you know what I mean? You know, add a little bit of red to that one there. Maybe some yellow to that one there just to bring it out. Okay. So you can fix them up as you go along. So that looks nice so far. And uh, we'll be adding more. Maybe I'll add a little bit of white and yellow. And I'll add that around here just to give some color. It's going to be a little tricky, you know. Make sure, if you can, wait for these to dry first. All right. So 
there and then you can add whatever you want over there maybe a little blue I don't know uh, whatever color you fancy hmm. I'm gonna add a bit of uh, let's see let's see a bit of red white I'm trying to come up with some nice of a different color not bad You want to add a little bit of color to your giraffe. This might be nice for a children's room, you know? You can make a big one like this, you know? Blow up the pattern that I gave you. Blow it up as big as you can, because I'm gonna use a very small canvas, all right? My canvas is only like an eight by 10, uh, eight and a half by 11. Um, so if you want to, you can make that really big for a child's room, you can have it like, uh, Go to one of your copy places and have them blow it up to maybe even 16 by 20s. Blow it up, or you can try to draw it out so that it fits, you know, a nice big canvas. And then you can do it then for a child's room. I think it'd be really nice for a child's room. Do you? Yes, I do. Just adding a bit of color in here. I like to brighten that up a little bit more. A little bit of green down there there just a little bit of green I know it's you know colors everywhere what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that nice I'm gonna add a bit of white to that and then I'm gonna move that around a little bit here and there and we have to fix up something after we will we just have to get something going first. It's no good trying to say, okay, well, that's not perfect. You know, I gotta keep going over that one spot all the time. Don't do that yet. We can do that after. We can go over the final details after, and we, we'll be able to pick out then what we think needs a bit of work. All right, just get something going here. Some color in between those. You can have just plain white if you want, but I don't want that. I want lots of color, lots and lots of color. My, I got a dirty brush, I got some blue on there and all kinds of things. So I got a, that dark color, I'll give, him a little bit of, give her a little bit of a nose here, just a little speckle here like that. A little bit of mouth here. I already got a mouth. I'm going to open it up a tiny bit because mom is really happy. Mom loves her baby. There we go. Isn't that nice? I'm so happy about her baby. So we got to go in between those other ones. Let's clean off our brush. Make sure you don't have any black on it. So we're going with a light color. Let's, I don't know, maybe some yellow and just mix. You see colors here, just kind of throw in some white with those colors and mix them in together. Kind of just throw that on here like this. I might even add a little bit of brown to that. Just sort of like a flesh tone or something, you know, just kind of because if you look at realistic uh, giraffes, they do have a bit of a flesh tone on their, on their body. But I don't want it to mix too much with the colors we already have there. I'm trying to separate them. A bit of white to brighten it up. Just have to have a little bit of a steady hand, or if you end up going into each other, just go back and fix it after over those lines we made with the carbon paper. Let's go over those because you don't want to be able to see those. If you have a problem getting rid of those lines, then take a, a, a marker and go over those. I'll show you now in a second. Got so many things I want to show you. 
because you you know you may not like everything I show you, but at least you'll have lots of uh, uh, different techniques that you can use in different paintings. All right, that's good. Not bad, not bad. All right, I'm gonna get my marker and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I showed you this before. This is an acrylic paint marker and you can get them in all colors. I got them in my Amazon shop. I put them, made sure I had some there for you in case you want to look, all right? You can shake it up. It's acrylic paint, so you can use it with your painting because it is acrylic paint and they all go together. And if you've got some problems with some of the lines, just go over some of those lines with acrylic paint. And it's much easier to do this than it is with a brush because you know sometimes it's hard to keep your hand steady or whatever so you can go over all of these if you want and or you can just go through some of them get that extra shadow that you want see that way you don't have to uh, extra shadow see Kind of brings it out more, doesn't it? Look at that. Isn't that nice? See how that how that really brings it out more? Then you can shape up your shapes better. I'm just doing the bottom part because I, I think I might be over doing it if I Difference. Isn't that nice? I like it. Just at the bottom of these. I'm just thinking it might be a little too much if you do the whole thing. Oops. That's the eye. You can straighten up the eye if you didn't get it properly the first time. You're working with acrylic paint, it's just that you're using, instead of a brush, you're using a marker style. And it's easier to hold on to and easier to control. All right? You can even fix up this ear. a difference doesn't it well, here we got we're going to do this um, just going to put some little you can use your brush for this I'm just going to put some little like that like I said it's paint so when we put more paint on there that will blend together nicely with it this is just his little furry thingy Furry thingy. All right. Let's see if I get some more down here. I like that. That looks really nice. Get that eye straightened up better. See. You get this in different colors, so if it's too black, you can use like a brown, right? When you, when you so let's give a little dab of white to the eye. Right here. There we go. And a little bit in the corner. So just a little bit to bring it out. Good. Now. Let's finish this up here. Maybe we can take our marker, our acrylic marker, and we can add some shadow down here a little bit. With a brush, but I find that these markers are a big help and they speed up the process. Aren't they great? Nice.
Now get out your small flat brush and we'll finish this up here. And all that is, is taking some red, orange, yellow, and burnt sienna. All right, so we're gonna just throw on some red and we will use the chiseled edge of your brush and that's why I used a flat chiseled edge. And I'm just going to put in some red like that. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna spread it out, okay? I wanna spread it out so that all the colors will work together. So just put some red in, and now I'm gonna go in yellow. So go into yellow, and try to work it wet on wet, so that all the paint is wet, so that it'll all blend together nicely. So now I'm gonna go with yellow. So leave that top part with the brown, the burnt umber or whatever brown you're using. There we go. Good. And now we can add a little bit of burnt umber to that. I should say burnt sienna because burnt umber will be too dark. So, or a little bit of medium brown or, you know, with a, a brown without the black. I want to go back in with a bit of red too. So I'm just sort of going back and forth with different colors and separating them so, so they'll mix nicely. with a bit of red, I think. Just back and forth till you get enough there and you're happy with it, all right? All right, again, here we go, it looks good. Looking good. That's good. A little bit of yellow. You can do it as many times as you want. Just try to keep the color separated so that you don't have just one color. That looks all right. That's nice and colorful, isn't it? It's cute. So for the baby, I'm just going to use the smallest flat brush you can find. And I got some red. And I'm just going to start somewhere, okay? Start somewhere. You pick a spot that you're happy with and then just add the colors. And I'll pick up some spots that I think might be nice with the red on there, now that you got the red out. Start adding probably some burnt sienna, darken up some of these. Mm 
maybe even darker because I'm getting down here. some dark spots. I got some burnt sienna on one side and red on the other. Let's see what happens there. Put the red side down or the dark side, doesn't matter. Just putting two of them together to see what get a darker red. If you want to go over some of these, you know, uh, make it more opaque looking, you're going to do a couple of different coats. And a little bit of yellow to my dirty brush. So I can change the color a little bit. It's not going directly by the uh, by the reference photo, I'm just kind of putting them on where, wherever my color falls. Because it's mostly red and burnt sienna, isn't it? Back and forth with red and burnt sienna. And this will make a cute little. Some spots are darker than others. The reference photo is helping me make decisions on where I want to put this, the darkest. some darks and lights. Now, let's see if I got them all. I haven't got them all. So I'm going to clean my brush a little bit. I'm going to see if I can make some lighter ones. Just wipe it off in tissue. Because you want to keep some of the different colors on there. gone here I'm just going to use the corner of my brush because my brush is pretty small but you can get a round one dark ones so just the, the tiny ones you can just touch, 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 touch the corner of your brush. It's make it easier for you. See? Just touch, 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 touch. For the small ones. And they, they can be bright red or dark or some little ones up here. Just touch. Might need a little round brush for this here. His eyes black. These are dark. A dark mouth. You can wait for the marker for that if you want. If you find it hard to get that, I think the marker might help. And down here at a chin. And 
we will pick up a little bit of um, yellow on my dirty brush with some blue and I'm getting a greenish color with some red mixed in. That's fine. Right? That's fine. I'm gonna add that here just to give it some color. So you can leave it light or you can add whatever you want to put in between. I like the flesh color. I'm going to leave that for now. So I think I got all of them. I'm not sure. We'll see. Looks like I got most of them. All right, now I'm going to go with um, burnt sienna and my blue to make it black color. All right. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber burnt sienna. And that will make it black color for you. Put that in the eye. I'll put that right in the eye. Yeah. We can put in the highlights after, so that's okay. And I have two little knobs here. Two little knobs. shadow color there so I'm going to add a bit of red to that dark color I made and I'm going to just add a dark red here you can add whatever colors you want because this is more of a uh, an, uh, I don't know what to call it it's more of a cartoony painting and it's great for a kids room in my opinion okay I think that will be really nice. So you can make that as colorful as you want. You can even match it up with your walls, you know, if you wanted to. So let's get a little bit of that flesh tone going on there. Just some white, burnt sienna, a bit of red, and some white. Nice and white. So let's go with some white and sienna, a little bit of red, and more white than anything, okay? Just to keep it brighter feel to it. So we're gonna add this in here and just sort of mix it in with everything that we did. some color on here. If these down spots are dry, that's even better because you can sort of paint around them without moving wet paint around. You know, see how I'm mixing in? The paint is wet so it's getting mixed in what I'm doing, so you don't want that really. Just get some of that flesh tone and get, get some of that in there. Gotta have some color to the skin part. If you look at these animals, their skin is kind of a fleshy tone underneath all these dots and spots. Dots and spots. <laughs> Alright, so that's that. Now, same here, we're going to use the burnt umber with your burnt dumbo or burnt sienna or you can add a little blue to black and this one can be a little darker or you can have whatever colors I'm just using the corner of my brush my flat brush but I want the flat brush because it's got a chiseled edge to it okay so I'm just pulling that back from the top of the line and out over the line all right just pulling those back back into there then I'm going to add my reds and yellows and make some oranges. I'm going to pull back up into what I just did. The red. And 
is still wet, so it's gonna blend. See the nice red going on there? Red going on with that color. Look at that, look at that. darker color but upper pull it in here like this and we can then add for a dirty brush we can add some yellow Right, though, it looks nice, doesn't it? Brightens it up, that's nice. I like that. I kind of like that because it kind of brightens it up a bit, you know? So you can add more to this if you want. I'm not sure, I'm kind of nice the way it is. I think I'll come up into these a little bit more because it seems like they're, they're just sitting there and they need something. Could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could mess it up if I keep playing around too much. Sometimes you can play around a lot. And other times you can play around and, and it could end up really making a, a mess of your painting. So if you like what you see, better off, you know, leaving it alone. I'm doing this because I don't really like what I'm seeing. I, I want to see a little more color, a little more contrast, you know? There we go. I like that. This, and I'm going to let's see what else we need now. I'll take my small round brush and I'm going to See if we can get him to look up at, at his mother. Almost. A little bit of weight in the corner. Look it down at her nose. <laughs> That's good, sure. Wrong that. But the mother is looking at the baby. Yeah. The baby has. Uh, some little dots here. Some here. Mama has some dots in here. Maybe the fur in her ear. And that's cute. All right. So you can take your marker if you want. And you can um, outline some of the babies. There we go, just to get that. So you can outline wherever you want or wherever you think it needs it.
kind of nice. So I think, I think that's pretty nice. Now, nice. I'm not sure if it needs anything else. It's kind of empty in here, isn't it? I, I don't know if a flower would look nice there or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sticker. These are my stickers I showed you in my other painting. I'm going to buy some more of these because I, they, I think they come in pretty handy to help you make a decision on where to put things. Like I'm thinking maybe a nice flower would look in there, but I don't know if it will or not. And I might put it in a ruin it, right? So I'm just going to take this little sticker off if I can get it off. Okay, it's not too hard. All right, just let's see what it looks like. And if we like it, we can put it in. What do you think? Think that look nice there? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'll leave it as a sticker for now and let you let me know. You let me know. I'll leave it as a sticker for now. Um, there's some more here. Look. I don't know. They're so pretty. Let's see what else we got here. I, I don't have a lot of stickers. I have some butterflies I've used in my other one. Maybe a little butterfly might be cute floating around over their head or something. Let's see, let's see. I don't know, which one do you think? Which one do you think? Uh, that one's too big, right? So we have to match it up so that it looks nice for floating around her little head. I don't know. Wish I had more. This one here kind of looks like the colors, you know, or this one here might, maybe this one might be nice because it's got, it's um, not overpowering. I don't know. Let's see. We'll find out. All right. What do you think? Do you think those additions would look nice? Let me know in the comments. If you like them, I can add them to the painting. See? All right? I can add these to the painting. Maybe that's not colorful enough. I don't know. I love making decisions like this. This is great, isn't it? I love this idea of stickers. I think this is amazing. <laughs> but it is for me, anyway. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm like a kid. When I do paintings, I'm like a child. I just love playing around and coming up with new ideas and trying new things. So I've got another one here. And you can reuse these stickers, too. So if you don't use them when you're finished using them on your painting, then you can... Oh, I tore it. No, I didn't. So I'll take this one off. That one's kind of nice too, right? But it feels like it's empty, don't you think? You know, in this. Right? So they come off nicely, and they can, you can put them back on the little sticker pad and then reuse it, right? So, a little bit sticky, which is good. I'm glad it's sticky. But uh, I kind of see. So I'm trying to make a decision on what way it would lay nicely on it. So I mean, you can take it off and lay it different ways. That looks prettier, doesn't it? I think that would be really nice. I'm going to let you let, make that decision for me because I really like. I like it when you guys help me out and and you guys help me make decisions. I don't see anything wrong with that. So I got my fingerprints on there. So just make sure that your background's got a nice orangey color to it, okay? I'm not gonna, I don't think I should play around with the background because I got those flowers. I like them, they're really pretty. I'm gonna let you make that decision for me. And if you decide that you think they're nice, uh, those stickers, I will paint them onto the painting and we'll see what it looks like painted on, all right? And I'm gonna see if I can find some more stickers and then we can start uh, using them to help us decide on our paintings and, and lay out our composition. But that's nice, isn't it? Don't you like it? What do you think? Thank you so much for painting along with me today. And you can subscribe and share and like. And that way you will be able to get notified of my new upcoming videos. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.